Hello everyone, Parse7 here, back again with a, another Bloom C6 videos, and this time, as you can tell by the thumbnail, we're seeing if super buffed mob eliminator can beat Blunaries. Now I guess this is the first cheap tower that I'm doing. Um, I figured that um, mob eliminator could probably do this due to the um, increase in mob damage that um, middle path bomb gives. As well as the ability and how fast the cooldown is. I think the ability damage is like four and a half thousand per ability used. And the ability comes back fairly quickly, so I was having high hopes for Mob Eliminator and beating Blue Narius. Another upside to using Mob Eliminator is that the middle tiers are gonna be fairly easy. Um, as you'll tell by the video, you know, tiers one through four were really not too difficult. The hardest part was really just dealing with uh, all the stuff that Blunary uh, spawns as soon as he reaches his skulls. Now, just like to say, this footage was recorded before um, the new update 30.0 was released. So, if you don't know, um, I believe that Mobile uh, or Middle Path Bomb in general did get a nerf um, in 30.0. Um, they did remove uh, Middle Path's Bomb extra SRAM damage that it has. It wasn't like massive SRAM damage, but it was like plus one, so it made like sort of a difference. So even though, you know, Middle Path Bomb does have some uh, it's pretty good stepping stones like Moab Assassin, I did want to go straight for Elam for Tier 1 just to just make it as fast and as easy as possible. And I figured why not, I didn't really want to slog through Tier 1 with just Assassin. I wasn't even sure if Assassin can even beat Tier 1 of Blunarius anyway since the ability cooldown is a lot longer for Assassin. And I think Assassin only does like 700 damage, I believe. I figured it wasn't really going to be too hard to save for Mobile Eliminator on Tier 1 as it was only like 23k and apparently uh, people who a uh, speedrun as some um, lich and all that get like perma spike before round um, before round 40 because apparently that's the speedrun shot which is um, fairly interesting. <laughs> uh, as soon as I saw that I was actually kind of surprised myself as I didn't really think that perma spike would be um, used for I guess just bosses in general. And I think it was like what first strike spam before first strike was nerfed in boss balloons, and that was also pretty cool. So uh, jumping forward a bit, here is round 40. So I get all the stuff I need beforehand. I do plan on selling like, all these farms here, and of course, you know it's more than enough to for mobile owner. Even have some money left over. Although I do need support for these ceramic insides as mobile meter um, really isn't very good against the ceramic wave. It's definitely not a ceramic damage tower, um, even with the plus one ceramic damage that it has. Um, it's not really, I guess, the best. I get a reactor and I want to also get a glue hose as well. So I figured I probably do need to slow down the ceramic. So mobile meter and reactor just have a bit more time to pop the ceramics. Of course, as you can see, it's not too hard. Uh, mobile Limiter just absolutely shreds tier one of um, Blunarius. I was honestly more worried about the uh, ceramic clump was uh, going to spawn, but it, it, I guess, you know, reactor and glue hose did hold off. It's just a bit, even though it did leak some, which didn't really give me much hope for um, the next turn of grave. I end up getting corrosive glue, just, you know, hopefully pop down the layers more. As I did see that mobile Limiter did uh, hit some zebras in the first ceramic clump, which I assume, you know, cause it's not do as much damage as it potentially could have, but even still that's not good enough to stop me from leaking. I want to avoid spending as much money on support as I can to just beat the ceramic wave, so I just save that for farming. And as you can see, you know, tier 1, you know, was fairly easy, of course, you know, with the help of Molo. I ended up selling everything for um, farms, I realized that was a bad idea because, you know, zebras was this round. I don't have any of the rounds memorized really only just I guess semi important rounds like you know 22 not 22 15 27 28 30 it's just all those um so yeah an embarrassing I decided to get a bit of bouncing bullets I got it for the zebras and to help out against the ceramic clump which you know bouncing bullets actually did a fairly good decent job of just helping out against the ceramic wave it definitely um, wasn't as bad as it was I guess the last attempt. So anyways, tier 2 Blunarius. I get a overclock here as I wasn't really sure if I would need it. Probably not, but you know, better to be safe than sorry. And plus at this point, you know, I have so much money that doesn't really even matter. Well, I mean, not like loaded rich like it would be in, like farther down the line. But it still is a lot of money that I don't really mind how I'm using it. Looking back, I probably didn't even need it because, you know, the mobile lander ability probably would have just hard carry this whole time. 
Um, I ended up getting a glue strike here just to again help out against the ceramic wave as I wasn't really sure if reactor uh, had enough in it because the ceramic wave in tier 2 Blinaris is a lot denser than it is in tier 1 so I just want to make sure I can actually beat the ceramic wave. Now this is the exact reason why I chose you know mobile emitter for buffing a tower as again you despite it, might, it being cheap and its main attack isn't really anything I guess just too amazing and special. I figured it would probably do just as good as the other more expensive tier 5s just due to the fact that my winner is really just built to just delete mobs from existence. So yes, this fitting for the name Mobile Eliminator. Now I believe that this is actually the first time I've used Mobile Eliminator against Planarius. Um, simply just cause, well even though Mobile Eliminator is of course built for just mob damage in general, um, I do feel like you know it probably is outclassed by like a lot of other, other options. Um, you know, I guess Sticky Bomb and, you know, Mail is a lot cheaper than, I guess, Mobile Eliminator. It's, like, cheaper by kind of, like, a lot that it doesn't, I don't really feel like it has a use. And also for, I guess, Elite, um, Lunaris, um, Mobile Lander probably isn't as strong since, you know, the massive amount of HP that he has. It just probably just isn't really worth using in general. Maybe for like tier 1s and 2, but like anything higher than that, I probably wouldn't even bother using it. So for tier 3, just getting even more support as well as Energizer, Homeland, and Primary Expertise. Expertise was mainly gotten to help with ceramic cleanup. Energizer was, well, of course to decrease the ability cooldown. Wasn't really sure if it would make too much of a difference since the cooldown is already pretty speedy. But you know, I figured you know every little bit helps and it's just worth getting. I have nothing else to spend my money on at this point except for just saving up for a temple. As well as getting an ultra boost, but uh, that can come at a later time. Now I figured that, you know, just super buffing um, Elim at this point would be more than enough to handle um, any of the other rounds. And I also have expertise just for a ceramic cleanup if I do end up struggling against, you know, ceramic balloons. Which again, nothing doesn't seem to be too much of a problem. Except for, I guess, a few ceramics eating just a bit far. My um, expertise does have some very, very slow attack speed, but when the homeland ability is active, it does do a pretty good job at cleaning up, I guess, just uh, super ceramics, which is pretty nice. Not to buy another tower for that. Energizer does sort of help against super ceramics, but at this point, um, it's not really too useful. Now, you might be wondering why am I going bottom path village when I usually go top path? I was feeling lazy, didn't really feel like spending money on farmers, so that's why I just went um, bottom path. I figured that probably wasn't too much of a difference from going bottom to top path. Seeing as again, I don't need a ton, a ton of money to actually, you know, beat this. Um, normal is easy enough that I can get away with, you know, weird strategies like this. So for the final Moab wave, um, I was very actually um very close to dying here so yes there was that expertise just sometimes does miss or doesn't attack fast enough to get up to clean up all the ceramics which can be a bit annoying but ultimately you know hey what can you do thankfully I do have lives to tank all this so yes there's I have that going for me which is pretty nice my expertise did actually clean up the ceramics this time I guess I'm just going back home and rejoining I guess just reset the attack cooldown so it was able to clean up ceramics when the mob spawned. You know, middle path bomb getting its ceramic damage, you know, removed is kind of, I guess, I guess that might mean that Mauler spam is no longer a viable option since, you know, you'll probably struggle a lot against round 80 plus. Although, I guess with that strategy, you probably could get like, the biggest one or something to help with ceramic cleanup. So, I guess, you know, just I'm uh, gonna be cluster bomb spam to be taken over. So, for tier 4 Blinaris, I ended up getting a Ultra Boost as well as a Monkey Nomics simply just because, well, no one actually uses Monkey Nomics possible, and so I figured, hey, why not? Free 10k ever for every how long the second, how long the cooldown is. I'm not really too sure about that. Uh, tier 4, as you can see, is going pretty smoothly. Um, Elim is absolutely decimating when the as Homeland and Ultra Boost is active. You'll notice that when Homeland is, off cool, is on cooldown, um, the DPS just like has kind of dropped significantly to the point where it's actually um it's like highly noticeable. Um, I didn't really think Homeland would make too much of a difference, but just like seeing how fast uh, Elim fires when Homeland is up versus when it's not is actually kind of a big difference. 
So I personally was actually like, a bit surprised with how well just Elam is easily, you know, just like shredding Blunarius and just won't put mob inside as well. I figured, you know, since it's not really it's an expensive tower, like I have shown in other videos, like, you know, Raidoom, Flying Fortress, Ansel Blue and all that, I figured, you know, it might be beat up to like tiers 1 through 3, but it might not be able to beat the last few tiers, so it was actually a bit surprised seeing, you know, Elam path this far, and I don't even have like all my buffs yet, and I still do need a support temple, which is a pretty massive buff. Seeing this just made me think, you know, hmm. Maybe, you know, Elon will be the first, I guess, cheap tier 5 to actually be able to beat uh, Blunarius. Although, I guess this is really the only cheap tier 5 I've actually featured. I believe the cheapest that I've shown so far is Bez. Although, Bez was kind of, I guess, in the last part of um, Super Buff to be doing. The nice part about doing this is I don't even really need to do anything. All you need to do is just activate the ability and voila. I just have tech bots for Elim's ability and just everyone else's ability. So I'm fairly easily able to just do nothing and focus on farming. Although I really should you know, get something for, I guess, just ceramic cleanup because again, my ceramic cleanup is absolutely awful. Um, expertise, you know, is a bit slow and it relies on Homeland for it to be able to consistently catch ceramics that are leaking. I do eventually um, solve this, I believe, as soon as Blunarius is beaten. I do get a balloon solver, but I think before then I don't really do too much. And so, you know, I was just like, you know, I'll just leak the lives, it doesn't matter. So I ended up leaking down to nine lives, which is a bit, um, a bit close. I almost uh, died there, but it's whatever. So I wasn't really confident about my defense for the final skull of ZUMGs. So I ended up getting a silver glue in the back to hopefully catch the leaks that Elim was is definitely gonna leave. Um, I figured that you know Elim was probably gonna maybe break it down to BFBs or mobs, but Elim didn't even do that. It just damaged him, and so I guess there was that super glue was just gonna have to solo all these UMGs, which of course super glue um, roots really can't do. Uh, I wasn't really sure what tower I was gonna get for that, as again this is super buffed Elim, so I wanna just showcase off Elim. I ended up dying here, which is a bit annoying. I had to redo all that, but it's not too bad. I end up selling all my farms, see if I can afford temple, just to make this easier. But fortunately, I can't afford temple, but with no support sacrifices. I just end up getting a balloon solver and just end up calling it a day. I figured that was, that was probably more than enough than I need to actually beat ceramics to maybe support um, expertise, maybe just a little bit more, even a post round 100. Um, my solver is actually some decent sermon cleanup. Unfortunately, I don't really think it's as good as, you know, biggest one and other ceramic cleanup options simply just because, you know, biggest one is full map range and actually stuns ceramic versus slowing them down and stunning them is a lot better than slowing down, but it's whatever. Uh, solver was cheaper, so that's what I went for. Alright, so here I wasn't really uh, sure, again, what I was going to do for the ZMG, so I ended up getting spiked mines and biggest one in the back. Again, you know, it was like the same situation the last time. I wasn't going to have all the time in the world in order to pop these UMGs that um, Blunarius is going to spawn. So hopefully I figured that um, Elim was maybe going to break it down into something more manageable that um, the biggest one in Spike Mines can hopefully clean up. And it does seem like I guess that was sort of the case, but not really. It was just BFBs and, you know, I figured that you know, the biggest one in Spike Mines wasn't really going to be able to clean this up. So I ended up getting these Super Mines in the back just... Just because I figured that you know, I didn't really want to die again to this and buy even more defense, so I just figured you know just just get a uh, spike, well, not spike mines or super mines. Uh, super mines did get a pretty nice buff. I think it was last last update in 29.0 to make it better against boss balloons. Although it's still not really ideal against boss balloons simply because it's too expensive to really be viable for any of the like I guess important tiers like you know tier one, two, three. For tier 4, you really just want to go for, I guess, a paragon, or a temple, whatever strategy you're going for. So here it is, the final tier of Blunaris. I ended up permabrewing and giving a village to True Sun God, as it unfortunately was not in range of Elim when I first plopped it down. It also ate up my homeland defense, although I guess that's fine, since homeland is a support sacrifice, so it wasn't really too bad, it was just meant I just spent more money um, on than I really wanted to, but it's whatever. Um, let's talk about Elim's damage. Elim's damage right here it was kind of eh, 
I figured that, you know, wasn't really shredding fast enough in order to actually beat tier 5. Hopefully, I was hoping that, you know, maybe with the just constant ability spam being used, what well, seems like, I guess, every, what, like, two seconds, hopefully that that was enough to maybe carry me to actually beat Planaris, although it wasn't really home looking good. Planaris was on the second path and was didn't even reach for a skull yet, so that was a bit of a worry. Nevertheless, I held hope that hopefully Elim would just awaken something in him and just absolutely it's just shred Blinaris. Even if it wasn't able to be tier 5, it still is pretty impressive and again, a tower that only costs, what, like 25k in total, like 25k, 26k in total, is still able to, you know, compete with, you know, heavy hitters like, you know, Flying Fortress and Ray Doom for just absolutely beating just Blinaris. So, it is again pretty impressive that just really cheap tower like this is able to do this. Of course, you know, it's a tower that is meant for mob damage. That is just middle path spawn purpose is mob damage. Of course, even more now, so since they removed the extra ceramic damage from middle path bomb. So, yeah, you know, Ray Doom wasn't able to beat tier 5, so I guess um, Elim would just go there for that. Um, Elim, unfortunately, was not able to beat the... Um, the bad layer, which is actually a bit surprising. It wasn't even able to actually just pop it. So I ended up getting Super Storm in the back and Master Armor in hopes that these two would be enough to just pop the bads. So I just need to blow back DDTs. I don't even need to actually pop them, but apparently Master Bomber and Super Storm do not have enough in them in order to actually pop the bad. That was at like such little health. So after going home, I figured that, you know, maybe I can, um, redo this and hopefully Elim will actually pop the bat in time that Superstorm and Master Bomber can hopefully actually you know do his job. The bad spawns with absolutely no damage so when I saw that I figured yeah, yeah yeah I'm definitely not beating that. So I'm actually gonna end the video here. If you enjoyed um you know like, comment, subscribe, join Discord, link is down in the description below. I decided not to try here as again I probably could beat the bad if I you know just like got first strike or something. But, you know, I figured that, you know, the damage that Elim is doing isn't enough to actually beat Blunarius. So I figured that, yeah, I just call it here. No, uh, super buffed Elim, unfortunately, cannot beat Blunarius. But it can get, I guess, sort of close.